You know, it really is a sort of tragedy that we live in right now. If you look around our generation, you know, Gen Z, especially, you realize that most people are not here. They're not here, right? We talk about the rise of nihilism. Most of our generation has given up, most, right? And it's a huge tragedy. And in this video, I'm gonna to touch on the many different factors that contribute to where we are as a generation. And hopefully this opens up someone's eyes to better understand or generation. Maybe you're a grandparent and you want to know why your grandkid is acting the way he's acting, he or she. Um, hopefully this video will shed some light. Okay, so let me start by talking about our parents, right? Or parents or are mostly millennials or baby boomers, right? And that generation had at their fingertips the world, right? The rise of technology, adjusting to TVs, becoming a commonplace in households, right? Adjusting to the rise of social media and the 2000s, the early 2000s with phones and quick correspondence between persons. And that's a swift transition for humankind. So our parents had to deal with a, an abundance of new technology and had to master it quickly. And about around the time we came around, they didn't have a full grasp of it. So a lot of them learned how to deal with, how to balance our lives with technology while we grew up, right? So, and that had a huge issue on how we, came to see the world, right? Most of us grew up on video games or movies or TV shows, reality TV, right? And that kept us in the house on average for a longer time than generations in the past. And so our social community has kind of lessened in terms of its reach, right? And that's led to more loneliness in our generation. So people become more divided because they don't interact nearly as much, especially in Gen Z. You look at the, the demographics, um, especially with politics, I think they say like the guys and girls are like almost completely on the opposite side of the political aisle. And I think one of the reasons is because the groups are separated at large, right? Of course, I'm not saying that, oh, people don't talk to each other. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying at a large scale, people have not interacted to the level that they have in generations past. That is all I'm saying. And right, the things that I mentioned before, are large contributors to this fact, right? And when we grew up, we had social media. Now, what is social media? Social media is a very potent media, right? Means of communication that we grew up on. If you're watching this video, you probably have Instagram, you have YouTube, you probably use Twitter, you probably have TikTok, right? This affects our brains. It's dopamine, it's a source of light and lights and music and sound and laughter and enjoyment. But the thing is, we only have a finite amount of time on this world, 24 hours in a day. And if we're, the more we use our cell phones, the less we interact in the real world. That's just how math works. That's the reality of it. If you spend eight, eight hours on your phone, then there's 16 hours left in the day. And so eight hours is gone. And you've spent that on your phone. And the reason we are so appealed to our phones and social media in general is because it's designed for that cause, right? It's designed to hook you. And with the rise of short form content, like 60 minute videos, like Reels, YouTube Shorts, and TikToks, right? Our attention span has been lowered significantly, significantly, right? And that has helped us to not want to engage in normal conversation, normal fun, because it's too long, it's too slow, and it's not as appealing as the other options we now have that we find in social media. And you talk about the rise of prawn, which hopefully you know what that means, the rise of prawn, that presents to us another substitute for an innate human desire that should drive us, right? Or sexual desire that should drive us. Now that's being substituted for, and that drives us further apart. And the thing about our dopamine receptors, right, is that they govern pretty much our happy and sad emotions, right? And that's all being substituted for an artificial form of what we would have gotten otherwise in the real world. 
And since that's been substituted for, we no longer seek things that actually affect our real lives, even though that's what we need and want at our depth, right? We want actual community, not likes on an Instagram post, right? We want actual intimacy, not satisfaction from prime. We want actual highs from life, like adrenaline-based, what should I say, adrenaline-based fun, not a high from Nick, right? So there are, our world, our generation has been flooded with substitutes for the real thing that we should desire. And in so doing, we have hijacked our own brains. And so we are incapable of doing the things that actually fulfill us, that actually make us happy because there's so many substitutes for it. Instead of being brave and outgoing, we play video games, right? And this, I'm not being spooky about this, bro. I'm not telling you to like throw away all these things. I'm not telling you they're all bad. All I'm saying is that they are substitutes. And that craving you have for attention and community is being substituted for things that you like also. Well, the thing is, your body, your natural body, right, still craves the natural things. Where you're substituting your brain, you're tricking your brain into thinking in the short term that, hey, my needs are being satisfied when they are not. And so that's contributed to a lot of things. You talk about why Gen Z is not responsive to authority, why we don't talk to each other, why we're so separated, why we're so divided, why we're so depressed right those things are all huge contributors to those things right talk about depression if all we do is try to feed ourselves consistent highs right every single second of the day we're doing something that gives us a high right we're washing the dishes we've got to be listening to something we're running we've got to be listening to music we're working out we got to be listening to music or podcasts or something we're trying to ride this wave of a high we're all addicts bro can you not see like gen z is full of fiends and i won't stop saying that bro because the thing is and the way the corporate world has been able to kind of manipulate us is we think that oh since it's just scrolling for 16 hours a day on tiktok you're not addicted at least it's not an illegal drug at least but you're addicted just the same, bro. Anything you do for that long that you can't do without, bro, is an addiction, right? And so when you talk about being depressed, you spike your dopamine levels and then when it falls, it falls beneath base level. Of course you're gonna be depressed, bro. You talk about the rates of people offing themselves, especially in our generation. This is why, this is why, this is why. These things are the root causes of where we are now. People don't sleep. If you don't sleep, your moods are thrown off, right? Of course you're gonna be depressed. And why don't you sleep? Because you're scrolling for 16 hours a day on an app, bro. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. We have been taught to hate ourselves because even though we don't do it consciously, we don't say, oh, well, I hate myself. So today I'm gonna to sabotage myself. I'm not gonna drink any water. I'm gonna eat junk food. I'm gonna scroll for eight hours a day, even though I know it's not good for my mental health. I'm gonna watch things I know I shouldn't watch, even though I don't wanna watch it, but because I feel like I should watch it, then I'm gonna watch it. Dude, we're being trained to subconsciously hate ourselves. And because it's not at the conscious level, we think, oh, I love myself, self-love. I'm gonna spend all my money because that self-love says who, bro? We don't take the time to consider why we do these things and that's the real tragedy. We just float along, we follow along. We just do what's set out in front of us. But I'm telling you bro, the only the only way we're gonna change this pattern and better the world for ourselves and our future families is by not just indulging in the things that are in front of us. Question why you do certain things, right? You feel lazy, you don't wanna get up, why? How is that gonna benefit you, right? You gotta see yourself as a group of people. You're not only you today, you're you tomorrow, you're you the next day, you're you next week. How do you wanna feel tomorrow? Do you wanna feel terrible and dehydrated tomorrow? Then you should probably drink some water today, right? And that's how we have to make decisions. Don't just do things that you feel like doing in the moment. And that's what short form content has trained our brains to do. 
Just do the next thing. Just do the next thing. Just do the next thing because that's what I want right now. That's not good for you. It's a tragedy. It's a travesty. Right? And it's a it's full time we take stock of where we're at and make the changes that we should. Or else, you know, who's gonna say what's gonna become of our lives? Because at this point, people don't even care what happens to them, bro. People don't even care what happens to them. The only way to fix it is by changing. I promise. I promise. Anyway, this is Corbin Conversations. I'm Corbin. Seek on, seek on. I will see you next time. Uh -huh.